It's another episode of 4th and 40, Rudy Campos Jr. alongside my ho- co-host. Well, no, I might call you my host because you're not a co-host. You are a host I'm the co-host, of the show. man. I'm just a guy in the you background, are... Rudy. <laughs> you do more than just the background. Coach Gio, as always, and we are missing the uh, man behind the glass, Chris Galler, today, but no worries. He will be back with us Wait, very, very is he soon. At the, is he at the bowling convention? No, actually, that bowling convention is not until next summer, I believe. So uh, he's got a little while to go. He's actually taking online classes. Uh, you know, he's got to get that GED going. So we just, more props to him. Uh, you know, that that's starting <laughs> to make sense now. It's starting to make full circle about I've had some questions about uh, you were able to answer it. Yeah, GED, good enough diploma is what he's trying to get in college. So. Yeah, he'll be back with us here pretty soon. Man, we missed week two. That was all on me because uh, technical difficulties had some issues with the computer and stuff wasn't going right. But, you know, week two was week two. We had one thing that is very common that has happened since week one, and that is injuries, significant injuries. We saw Michael Thomas actually miss week two. CMC, Christian McCaffrey went down. Devontae Adams has got an injury. There so much more. Jimmy Garoppolo is injured. We're going to start uh, see uh, Nick Mullins starting uh, for the 49ers. It's just it's a scary situation, man. Do you really feel that, uh, you know, do you really feel that the whole injury bug is just killing the NFL because of preseason? I mean, I don't know if preseason uh... actually starts like – it, it confuses me because people don't want preseason. They want more football, more regular season football. But it's like, wait a minute, you know. Yeah, it, it's a little interesting, Rudy, because you look at a team like the Rams who never play anybody at all during their preseason. They always play their backups. Uh, and the Rams, they went through a few injuries last week against the Eagles, but came out fairly healthy compared to other teams. I don't know if it's a preseason thing. I know San Francisco, Rudy – they were complaining to the Jets uh, about that stadium issue, about their turf and things like that. Yeah, yeah. But the NFL did kind of review that yesterday, and the turf looks good. But nonetheless, Rudy, it's a tough blow for the 49ers, a team that's coming off of a Super Bowl loss. You lose two of your best defensive fronts. Uh, and, Rudy, this is a team that rotates defensive linemen. You lose your mm-hmm. top two guys. They already got banged up with Sherman and some other guys. Uh, this is a football team, Rudy, that, to be honest with you, I could see this going downhill. And now you got Nick Mullins coming in at quarterback. So it's going to be interesting how San Francisco kind of balances out. But, no, I I don't think it's a preseason thing. Injuries do tend to happen. But I will say it's happened more than we've seen the past recent years. Yeah, and don't forget, I mean, they also are out. uh, Raheem Mostert and now Tevin Coleman is out as well. I mean, really, they're starting Jeff Wilson Jr. along with Jared McKenna, which, by the way, Kudos to him for coming back. He had two horrific injuries the yeah. past two seasons. He comes back in the full, played very well. But I think you're going to see a lot of Jeff Jeff Wilson. You're going to see a lot of of just trying to move the ball. I think George Kittle might play this week, Rudy, uh, if I'm not mistaken. They also have Jordan yeah. Reed, who, uh, who turned back out. the time last week. Well, I think he's out. I think George Kittle is out. Or ruled out this week, if I'm okay. not mistaken. But well, listen, I, I I think Jordan Reed will be a good kind of DraftKings kind of a, just a, a flyer because uh, really they got no receivers either. I mean, people are dropping like dimes over there. This is where a player, you know, and we're not going to really get into fantasy right now. We've got the fantasy countdown coming up uh, right after this. But this is where Dante Pettis, where you drafted him, could come in. Um. But you're right. They don't have very many receivers. So I'm going to pose this question to you because, I mean, I know we're talking about the 49ers here, and he's still out there. Why don't you make that phone call to a certain Antonio Brown? I mean, you've got to take a chance. You do. I mean, he is what's suspended until, what, week eight, I think, Rudy? I think that's – it's until then. I mean, he's a locker room – I, you know, I don't want to say locker room killer, but but he's definitely toward is in that route with certain regards. Rudy, they need a lot of help. I mean, maybe a Des Bryant. I mean, I, I know he's been out the game for the past few years. Uh, they're dropping like diamonds. Rudy, this is a football team that I think the injury bug just hit, and mm-hmm. 
in this NFC West, Rudy, where you have the Cardinals at 2-0, and right? You got the Seahawks. You got the Rams now coming along. San Francisco, no disrespect to them, they might be the worst team when it's all said and done. But what I mean by mm-hmm. worst is they just, you know, just don't play well simply because so many guys are hurt. Damn, yeah, you're right. And, you know, the uh, NFC West is just – it's brutal, man. You know, the Cardinals are coming into their own. Kyler Murray's doing really good. Of course, you never you never knock uh, Russell Wilson down. I mean, the guy, you can never count him out. The Rams, I am really liking the way Jared Goff has been playing. He looks more comfortable in the system. That's kind of a scary thing because, you know, this is a team, you know, not too far, uh, not too long ago was out of the was in the Super Bowl. I mean, yeah. so I think, I think the move to get rid of Gurley was actually a decent move. Move to get out, you know, get out of oh, Brandon Cooks' really, shadow. It's it's making sense now. He hasn't looked good in Atlanta the past two weeks. He just doesn't seem like himself. I think he averaged like two point something yards a carry. Um, and really, they didn't throw him the ball, which is weird. Uh, he is a yeah. guy out of the backfield, which you can match him up in space. They didn't throw to him at all. So it's a little kind of interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks. But, yeah, I mean, really, they, they're they still paying him his contract. There's dead money on the books. Yeah. Uh, but they wanted to release him. There was something negative about him. And uh, you know what? It was a tough situation. <clears throat> but you know what? It's over with. Now he's the Falcons' problem. Yeah, he's a Falcon. And speaking of the Falcons. Um, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, week two, I, I was kind of a little upset, just a tad bit upset because – my dirty birds, my doing me dirty wrong birds decided, hey, you know, we're going to just light up the scoreboard, go big up on Dallas. And, oh, we just need to recover an onside kick. Who in the hell doesn't know the rules of football? (laughs) Because if you are the kicking team, you have to have the ball. The ball has to go 10 yards before you can touch it. If you are the receiving side, you do not have to wait 10 yards to touch that ball. What in the hell do you think those Falcons were thinking? Because I literally was about to throw my phone against the wall until it cracked in half, just like the Falcons cracked on that game. I have no idea. I'm watching this as I lay down in bed. And first of all, that kick was, was really odd to begin with. But smart by Greg Zerline, uh, he kicks the ball, and I see it, and I see no one's actually jumping on it. This is the thing, and the owner of the Falcons came out this past week, Rudy, and says he doesn't think that the players understood. And then the coach says, no, they did. Oh, I'm leaning towards Arthur Blank because yeah. they were just staring at the ball. Now, the way you ca- the, the way you grab this ball, Rudy, is by kind of – Going off to the side as you hit the ground because if you just jump on it, it'll, that's it'll, it'll also scribble by. Yeah, I know that exactly. So, I I really am odd. Julio Jones was also there too. This was a very strange sequence, Rudy. I was ready. I had my rest in peace Cowboys ready to go. I was happy, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then I had to put rest in peace Falcons. Unfortunately, um, it's and... been rest in peace Falcons, you know, for a very <laughs> long time. Rudy, listen, your offense. Besides the running game has been kind of struggling. Your offense has really been putting up points. Yeah. Uh, and it's unfortunate that defensively, Rudy, I, I, I just don't understand. This is a defensive-minded coach, and they're really struggling. Dirk Cutter has been doing really well in Atlanta on the offensive side. But, yeah. I mean, nonetheless, it, it, I would have fired him last week, Rudy, on the plane ride there. I say, you know what? This is enough. It's time. You don't. What were you telling your players? What were the coach? What were your head coach telling you? <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, you're right. Fire the guy. I've been asking for Dan Quinn to be fired for a while, and Rudy, you I've may have to on... have a hashtag. Fire I've, Dan Quinn. I've hashtagged it. <laughs> I've hashtag. I put it on Twitter and even on Facebook. You know, hashtag hashtag fire Dan Quinn. I mean, this is something that. This team is not going to ever compete with him as a head coach. And, you know, I've been I've been Matt Ryan's harshest critic as a Falcon fan. I literally cannot find any reason to 
complain about Matt Ryan this season. Really? I mean, listen, I think the past two years, especially last year, he's played. I mean, he's played really well. He's been pretty efficient. That defense has just been. I mean, I'm not sure where they at. Are they on vacation right now? Are they thinking about after the season? Because defensively, and they made stops in that first half. So the talent is there. I, I, it's just the coaching just has to go. Get rid of him, Rudy. Start from scratch. And you know what? Bring in a Bill, uh, uh, the offensive coordinator from Kansas City, right? Bring in somebody else. It's, it's time to go, man. Yeah, for sure. We need definitely some new coaching in Atlanta. Rudy, you know what? It's kind of like that ex-girlfriend, right? You know, you, you try to work things out, right? It just doesn't work out. Just end it. That's it. I, well, I'm, I'm hoping Arthur Blanks listens to this podcast because you definitely need to move <laughs> on from Dan Quinn. I've, I've been saying it for a while. Our boys over uh, at the Prophets podcast, they are saying, you know, they don't think Dan Quinn's going to make it through week eight. I kind of agree. Week eight, I think, is our bye week. So I and, don't think he's going to make it there. You know what? Let's get some new coaches in there, too. I'm tired of seeing these recycled coaches as well. It's just the same coaches every year that we see get hired. And some of the young guys don't get hired as well. The same with the NBA, right? I mean, yeah. there's so many recycled coaches. Give us some fresh blood. Sam Cassell. You know what? Mark Jackson. And I, I just I keep bringing this up. And I know this is a football podcast. But can Mark Jackson get a job somewhere? Seriously. <laughs> well, he had a job in Golden State, and then Steve Kerr took him to, you know, Rudy, the titles he, and everything. Yeah, but he's been he's But been it was his blueprint. I mean, we can't we can't say that. We, yeah, but he, he's been blackballed, Rudy. Something's up. He, yeah. he must have a picture of somebody somewhere. I don't know. Mm. Well, I mean, we really can't help anybody on the NBA stands here, so I <laughs> I'd say but you know, yes, ultimately, you know, you got to get some better coaches in there. Eric B. Enemy, I want to see him be a head coach here pretty soon. Um, I'd love for him to go to Atlanta, but we've got to get that defense right. It's not like they have bad guys on defense. They've got some decent players, but they just don't have the coach that's going to actually motivate them uh, to play defense. So, you know, again, that was a a harsh loss. But you know what? I'm used to it. Hashtag 28 to three. I'm used to losses like that. Didn't surprise me that the Cowboys ended up getting the ball back, taking it down the field a little bit. Grab that. field. Isn't Gina a Cowboys fan? My wife is a Cowboy fan. So by marriage, I support the Cowboys Uh, just a tad bit. But yeah, we, uh, it's been a rough night. I'm still kind of not over it. So we're going to (laughs) take a quick commercial break here. We'll be right back. Rudy Cabos Jr. here reminding you to listen to the Sports Time from the Carrasco Realty Group Studios here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer every Sunday from 10 to 11 a.m. If you'd like to be a sponsor of Sweep the League, 4th and 40, and the Fantasy Countdown, contact me, Rudy Campos Jr. My email is rcomposjr at icloud.com. And we're back here, 4th and 40. I grabbed the uh, tissue box and wiped away my tears from that last segment discussing the Atlanta Falcons fumble, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know what it was. There's just It was just garbage. I've been saying garbage for a while when it comes to Atlanta. Rudy Campos Jr., Coach well, Rudy, Gio. Also, I, I want to add something on. If they were, were able to run the football as well, I think they need to do a better constant effort of that because – you know, what throwing the ball is what incompletions, right? You're stopping the clock. So they got to also figure out that running game as well. Yeah, they do. They do. I mean, Devontae Freeman was never the answer. Todd Gurley is still not the answer. <laughs> I don't know why. I see. I would love to get, uh, give Ito Smith just a little bit more of a chance. Uh, I, I was a huge Tevin Coleman fan. Huge Tevin Coleman fan. They got rid of the wrong running back when they let him go. Uh, I don't. I've never really liked Devontae Freeman. He reminded me a lot of Marion Barber, and it's just a guy who's just you know put his head down, you know, hit me in the helmet yeah, twenty times. I mean, you know, Rudy, like I, to me, <clears throat> watching San Francisco last year and that running back committee, I think running back by committee, and depending on the flow of the game, who's hot, and if they could do both run and catch. It puts a defense off balance because, hey, you know what? This guy can do multiple things. And you look at what the Rams are doing now with multiple running backs. Cam Akers is out this Sunday, though, with a separated rib cartilage. <laughs> but 
nonetheless, the Rams have multiple backs. That helps, man. How the hell does that happen? He fell pretty hard. And from hearing from the Rams this past week, uh, it's it's a really painful injury. Really painful. He was potentially going to play, but it doesn't make sense. You're going to play the Bills, a physical football team, this week. Uh, so we're going to get a dose of Debbie Henderson. And by the way, Malcolm Brown, he injured his finger, Rudy, uh, and he had surgery, and he's going to play this week. So toughen See it that, out. Yeah, they're tough guys out there. Tough, <laughs> tough guys out there. Not like Saquon, you know, who went out with the season. Ah, oh, come so. on, Rudy. <laughs> no, man, but, you know, getting into this segment here, the thing is, is that I want to talk about some of these injuries. I mean, you've got – you've literally got a Pro Bowl team – worth of injuries i mean we're talking saquon out for the year you know like we said early christian mccaffrey uh Devontae adams jimmy garoppolo george kittle i mean mike you, thomas yeah michael thomas you've literally got a pro bowl i mean i wouldn't even say pro bowl i'm talking you know a legendary lineup here that is out on injury and this is where it's kind of like okay it affects it affects obviously regular season. It affects also fantasy, which again we'll get into that talking in the fantasy countdown. But does this surprise you that we're seeing so many injuries right away? Does it go back to okay, you had your training camps, you had, you know, time to work out everything and all that, but why why do you think we're seeing so many injuries this early in the season? Well, Rudy, remember there was training camp certain things obviously it was just a different time right different style of training camp also preseason does help with kind of easing your body right back to full contact and they didn't have that this season um so you're susceptible to those soft tissue injuries right you're susceptible to some of these injuries where i mean Mm -hmm. some of these injuries really are non-contact right i mean there's just just crazy things are happening and unfortunately i think that preseason allowed teams to ease players back in and they weren't able to do that now someone can say well you look at a team like the rams they never play anybody in the preseason and they're fine kind of for the most part so it kind of depends on your point of view rudy but injuries do happen and maybe if we had injury uh preseason rudy this still would have happened right we kind of will never know uh but nonetheless rudy uh teams will have to navigate this situation and it, it's gonna be a tough year man it's, it's gonna be a weird strange and then no fans, right? So uh, that's going to be another kind of interesting thing. Well, it is. It is. And, you know, the reason why I, I mean, I'm bringing up the injuries is because a lot of these guys with their injuries, it's going to affect the outcome of a lot of the a lot of these teams on the season in general. San Francisco, we talked about earlier, you know, if they keep getting significant injuries. They're probably going to be the worst team in the NFC West. They're probably going <laughs> to get a higher draft pick when it comes to the next year's draft. Uh, you look at Saquon, Saquon going out. Now, they did sign Devonte Freeman. But that is not anything near. Have what you Saquon... seen the offensive line, Rudy? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, the Giants are still going to be Giants. I mean, they're not going to go really anywhere. Uh, but you're also looking at the Saints. We take a look at Week Two for the Saints against the Las Vegas. They didn't look good at all. They looked good at the beginning, but then Vegas was able to come back and Rudy, win. One thing about that team, I want to add, are they, they're very dependent on Mike Thomas. I mean, extremely. Exactly. Exactly. Depending on just one guy running slants every play. Exactly, exactly. And I, that's what I'm trying to say is, you know, you have a Michael Thomas who, okay, he's he's kind of considered week to week because of that high ankle sprain that he's got. But without Michael Thomas, is Drew Brees, Drew Brees. Can they win in a very deep NFC South? Because, you know, you've got the Bucks who basically uh, they had a really good week two i mean brady finally was able to show up which we both said that he would show up in week two uh that team's looking good carolina obviously with cmc's injury that team is another team that is going to fall way down on that standings uh you've got the falcons who have their troubles obviously i mean they can't really finish a game or whatever they can put up points but they can't stop anybody if you're looking at the nfc south Without a Michael Thomas, can you see the New Orleans Saints at least make it into the wild card? Because right now, I don't see them being better than the Bucks if Michael Thomas continues to be out. I'm 50-50 on this. I, I think they could still get in. 
are they going to do any damage if he's out for the year or anything like that? I, I, no, they won't. Offensively, very dependent on him. Kamara played very well. They don't, and then Emmanuel Sanders, Rudy. I mean, where was he? Well, like, was, was he like on retirement? And I mean, <laughs> their other receiver, Smith, played pretty well, but something just doesn't seem well, as well as Drew Brees, Rudy. The past few years, call what you call it, he was lucky last year to get those uh, those games off because of injury. It kind of helped prolong his season. But Rudy, I think he will. He's shutting down a little bit. That arm didn't look too strong. He did complete a ton of passes, but. There are a bunch of empty yardage at the end of the game. Yeah. Uh, and if I'm a Saints fan, I'm worried about Drew Brees uh, kind of holding on for the rest of the season. Now, there is an extra playoff spot. Uh, but really, I think <laughs> I think the NFC West is probably going to get the most teams probably in the playoffs, you know, if you're yeah. looking. I think you're going to get probably three teams out of that NFC West division. You know, uh, real quick, you know, I want to talk about real quick here for a couple of minutes on this one team. Because we're talking about teams that are probably, you know, struggling with injuries and all. This team really hasn't had any injuries. They just haven't looked good, in my opinion. And that's the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. But when you looked what they did last week against the uh, Chargers, it didn't look really good at all, man. You know, the Chargers had a chance to win. It took overtime for the Chiefs to win. It... Is there something that's going on in Kansas City that just doesn't feel right? Or is it just me? Because this offense just doesn't seem like it's the offense that we were expecting. I get no preseason. But again, you're not missing any pieces outside of Damian Williams, which isn't really a huge piece right now when you have <laughs> Clyde Edward Lair. I mean, do the Chiefs, are they vulnerable in your opinion? No, Rudy, I, I think it's just you. <laughs> I think the Chiefs. I mean, they put up three or four points in a week. Actually, it was like what thirty-one to seven at one point against the Texans. Yeah. The Chargers d- defensively, it's a very good unit. I mean, they they got a very good secondary. Um, and the Chiefs, this is a division game, right? So throw the records out. This is a team that knows each other very, very well. They play twice a year, and the Chargers came in and hey, they play tough. I mean, defensively. Very good secondary. I know. I think Derwin James is still out, but nonetheless, they they played very well. And you got to give the Chargers credit. They also got talent, and they hit they hit the Chiefs right in the mouth. And really, I don't know if the Chiefs were really up to play that game. Uh, you know, it's the Chargers. It is a rivalry game, but I just felt like Kansas City just didn't seem too interested. They will be interested though. Come this Monday night against the Baltimore Ravens, Rudy. That to me is going to be a very good football game. Which goes into the next part of this, why I don't think the Kansas City Chiefs are the Kansas City Chiefs right now. If they go into that Monday night game with Baltimore coming up and say Baltimore just shellacks them, does your stance change on it? No, uh, simply because I think the Chiefs are still the best team in the AFC. They got Patrick Mahomes, this Super Bowl MVP. They're going to hit their stride, Rudy. This might be a team that we see similar to the Patriots in years past. Have some lulls, have some highs throughout the season, just trying to get themselves to the playoffs. Not to say that they're going to be a team where they could just turn the switch on, but I think you're going to get moments like this where eh, we just want to get to the playoffs because that's when we're really going to hit our strides. But they have to be careful, though, because sometimes that mentality would come bite you in the ass. Exactly, exactly. And that's the part that I'm trying to – I'm trying to – now, I'm not dogging the, the Chiefs, but I'm trying to figure out are they – are they going to go that route? Hey, let's just get to the playoffs and we know we can turn it up there. It's not that simple, man. It's not an NBA playoff series. It's not an NHL or an MLB series. It's one and done. It's March Madness, basically, in the NFL playoffs. Yeah, no, I know. So if you say you get in there and you just, oh, you know what? We didn't win the we didn't win the AFC West. So uh, we're just going to go in there as a wild card and you end up drawing Baltimore second round or something. It. You put yourself in a bad position. Do I see them winning the AFC West? I really do. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I can't lie. Vegas is looking really good right now. Vegas has looked really good. So there is some competition out there, but I kind of agree with you on the fact that, you know, they will just kind of waltz into the playoffs and do what they have to do. I just felt a little concerned because, yes, they beat a very bad Houston team. Very bad Houston team. And then they go to Chargers where there actually is a defense. 
And they, to me, they struggled. And that's where I'm trying to think, okay, so if they go into Baltimore Monday and they struggle and they lose, and if they lose bad, is it, sorry, is it time to question the Chiefs and everything when it comes to them winning back-to-back Super Bowls? It's a legitimate concern. You know, I think that is definitely one. No, it we, is, Rudy. And I think yeah. that they might, as I said earlier, they're going to have their highs and lows. I think they're going to try to cruise. But in football, it's it's real tough to do that. Yeah, it is. It is. And again, you know, we'll see what happens this Monday night. We're, when we get back, we're going to actually get into more AFC talk uh, since we did cover most of the NFC here. Then after that, we're going to give our weekly picks for week three here on 4th and 40, Rudy Campos, Coach Geo. We miss you, Chris Galler. We'll be right back. Hey, are you looking for that local flavor, that local burger flavor? Look no further than Burger Boy. Oh, the wonders that is Burger Boy. Are you a working man? Of course you're a working man. Do you like working overtime? Not all of us do, but when it comes to Burger Boy, they have both the working man special and the overtime special. For you working men out there, that's a double Burger Boy, large fries, large drink. And for those of you working overtime, add that extra meat. We're talking triple Burger Boy, large fries, large drink. Yes. Burger Boy, the wonder that is San Antonio. Welcome back to 4th and 40. Rudy Campos Jr., Coach Gio, the man behind the glass, Chris Galler. Missing $10,000 reward for Chris if you can find him. Let's get into some AFC, man. You know, we've been talking about the uh, NFC here. Browns came out on Thursday Night Football. Joe Burrow looked pretty good man i can't really say we said joe burrow was gonna have a decent year when it comes to fantasy he's proven it he's having some pretty good year so far browns this is one of those games where oh okay the browns you know they came out they looked really good is that something that for the team that we said is the best team on paper is this game that game where you think to yourself okay they're gonna turn this season around this is what it's gonna be after two weeks you hope so uh this is a football team that Last year, everyone said, oh, they're going to make the playoffs. They're going to make them win, blah, blah. They don't. I had a feeling I did pick them to make the playoffs this season. I mean, really, they got the talent. Kareem Hunt running the ball, along with Chubb catching all that. Baker Mayfield just needs he just needs to play ball. Defensively, though, I, I didn't like what I saw a lot on Thursday night. Their defense just doesn't look pretty good, Rudy. And week one, I know it was the Ravens. They got shellacked on defense. Yeah. Um listen, they have what it they have what it takes. You got Austin Hooper who he's looked okay, but not as much as I thought he would look in this offense. Uh they just kind of play ball really. They have the talent, just don't get blown out because it just seems like they get these these games where they just get shellacked and it's like hey, you you got the talent. Stop force feeding Odell Beckham. Spread the ball around and Rudy, they just I don't understand that team sometimes. Well, you know, the thing that I do understand is the – let's go back a little bit here to the Jim Kelly and the Thurman Thomas and Andre Reed, you know, Bruce Smith days, Daryl Talley, the Buffalo Bills, man, 2-0. and Josh Allen has this team playing really good, 415 yards passing last week, yeah. four touchdowns. Uh, yes, it was against the Dolphins, but – well, Rudy, who who did he play week one? Can you can you tell everybody who he played week one? Well, week one, yeah, we can definitely tell you who he played week one. It was the Jets. And, yeah, the Jets. He's I'm saying he's got back to back weeks where he's got that. You know, he's got back to back weeks where he's got you know really teams that are eh, they're not going to do much. But this team is looking really, really good both sides of the ball. Yes. I love what Josh is doing. He's got a major matchup coming into week three here. He's going up against the Rams. Now, it is in Buffalo, which I've always been that guy. I'm that guy that says if you're going from the West Coast to the East Coast, East Coast to the West Coast, it makes it that much tougher. In this week's game, uh, Josh Allen, if Josh goes out and has another brilliant game, Buffalo is in control and beats the Rams, which I know you're a Rams fan. Obviously, you're you're the Ram ambassador. If they go out and win this game, are the Bills that team in the AFC that we're like, you know what, they're for real? I don't know. I mean, the Patriots are still there, but Belichick is still there with his holes in his shirt. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Mauled by a bear. And, yeah, man. <laughs> that shirt was ridiculous. But uh, Rudy, I'll say no. I, I, even if they go three and zero, they beat the Rams. The Rams play in the NFC. They play the Bills every so often, right? It's one of those games where it means something. It, it's a big game, but I want to see him against the Chiefs, right? It's the Ravens. Okay. It's some of these other high echelon teams in the AFC. Before I say anything just yet, um, the Rams are coming to the East Coast. Uh, but the fact that there's no fans, really, I really does think it affects certain teams more than others. I think yeah. the Rams uh, in years past get affected sometimes playing in loud arenas. And it's it's going to be fairly quiet in Buffalo. But listen, Josh Allen's been balling. I mean, he has been tremendous. I know he's played the Jets and the Dolphins. But you're playing who is on your schedule yeah, yeah. and... You're doing what you're supposed to do. If he wasn't doing it, we'll be down his throat, right? Uh, yeah. But listen, he's played well. He's an MVP candidate right now. If he continues this, who knows? We might have a Josh Allen MVP, which I doubt it. I don't think he could stay on this arc. <laughs> but if he stays on this arc, Rudy, if he continues, you may be looking at an MVP. Exactly, exactly. I mean, he's having a tremendous year, man. You know, another team that's 2-0, and and they are quietly 2-0. and Very quietly is the Tennessee Titans. You know, again, I can't get a read on this team. Derrick Henry's supposed to be the man. You know, Ryan Tannehill is having, you know, a, a decent season so far. Uh, six touchdowns, 480 yards passing on the year. Derrick Henry's only at 200 yards, and I say only because, I mean, he's a running back monster. But they go up against the Vikings this year. The Viking, uh, This week, the Vikings are 0-2. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in Minnesota. They can't play any defense. Yeah, so I mean, again, the Titans are two and zero. We mentioned the Raiders. The Raiders are two and zero. They're going into the uh, Foxborough, or I'm sorry, well, yeah, Foxborough Gillette Stadium to play against the uh, Patriots, where Cam Newton is actually he's looked good. I mean, he's revived his career. And really, uh, he's been looking pretty good. And if if he cuts outside, I, I think you're probably looking at a two and zero Patriot team. He decided to cut that inside against Seattle. They were there. If you want to cut that out. Hey, and he's been balling fantasy wise as well. He has, and I want to go to that quick that game real quick here. Why? Okay, you saw how Seattle was bunched up at the line. You, you they knew Cam was taking this ball into the end zone. That's no doubt. Why not? Why don't you call your audible there and release the fullback? I well, Rudy, if you look at the right side of the field. Nobody was on the right side of the field. Everything was bunched on the left side of the line. If you call the audible and your fullback cuts right, what do you have? You have a walk-in touchdown. I, I don't know if I could blame Belichick for that play call or not, but it just seemed kind of weird how he didn't recognize that that whole line was bunched up. Well, Rina, do you remember the play, I think, the touchdown before? Cam lunges in, and then he throws it. That's what I would have liked to see. Him start to run, fullback sneaks out, touchdown. Yeah. That, to me, would have been like a jump pass almost. That would have been a perfect scenario because Seattle, to be honest, they sold out. They, they sold out on that blitz. Yes. Uh, and uh, But nonetheless, Cam Newton, Rudy, he's looking really good. Potentially comeback player of the year. Um, and for fantasy-wise, I mean, you were able to draft him late. I mean, super. I got Cam Newton like in the 12th round in most of my <laughs> leagues. Um, so he's been playing really well. Uh, would like to see them running the football a little bit more, but he's he's the one that's running. So this doesn't matter. Yeah, no, no, for sure, man. I mean, I I just I actually questioned the hood on this one and thought, why didn't you audible out? I mean, you your fullback was right there, you know. You had enough protection on the line for Cam to at least give him, you know, that four or five second window uh, to make that pass. But you're right. If he even if he scrambles, you know, right, he's got enough speed. He could have beat the linebackers, you know, easily. I just couldn't understand why he why he did what he did. And then the lunge. I mean, if you're going to lunge, he'd like lunge straight up like a freaking bottle rocket man i'm like you're supposed to lunge forward and put the ball out but no he was hoping that he lunged someone hit him and he just found his way because when he did that yeah i knew he was gonna be short he wasn't even close to the oh yeah yeah i mean especially where he where did he lunge from like the two yeah i mean 
I think he wanted to get hit and then stop some way. You know what I mean? Like he just he just get to the red zone. But listen, it was a tough loss. But I think the Patriots. Um, I mean, listen, Russell Wilson's tough, right? I mean, he mm-hmm. he's an MVP candidate. He's launching balls. Metcalf is starting to come into his own, and uh, now Seattle's defense looks. <laughs> they're gonna have problems. Uh, so. And you know, I've got a problem that we're gonna cover in. The fantasy countdown with the Seattle Cowboy game. Um, I've got some huge problems with that, but uh, we're going to get into that. The other thing that I wanted to bring up with the AFC is these two teams. They're both one and one, the Colts and the Chargers. Out of those two teams, which team actually has the, the I guess, the clear path, the best path to get into a playoff spot? I think I like, I like Justin Herbert. I said he was going to be the best quarterback or he was the most ready quarterback in this past draft. I know Joe Burrow went one. Joe Burrow's proven it. But Herbert, to me, has been ready for a while. You know, we really didn't get much of Joe Burrow until this past college season. But Herbert's been ready for a while. He came in. He he led the team. He almost led him to a victory. But then you go on the Colts side. You have Jonathan Taylor, who's starting to take over, you know, that whole running back by committee thing. Out of these two teams, which one do you feel has the best and legitimate shot to make the playoffs? Rudy, it's the Colts. I mean, they get, they get to play Jacksonville twice, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a team we've seen that's probably going to lose. They play the Bengals. They got the Jets, right? To me, the Chargers schedule is yeah. a little tough, right? You got Kansas City another time, the Raiders, the Bills, the Patriots. Yeah. Um, to me, the schedule just doesn't bode well, but – the fact that the Colts get to play Jacksonville twice, they got the Jets, right? Some of the other teams they could feed off of. <laughs> but just think the Colts have the clear path. Uh, but the Chargers, what that means for them is that they're going to have to bring their A game every week because they've got a tough schedule. Yeah, I kind of – I mean, they I mean, do I... play the Chargers and the Jets, but the fact that you still got to play some of these hierarch teams, give me the Colts. Yeah, I can't disagree with you on that. I like the way uh, Herbert looked last week. Uh, the Chargers, they've got a team that you can definitely see maybe potentially getting into the playoffs still. I just, but you're, you're I right think I was Colts. too, uh, I think I was too high on them. I, from watching them the first two weeks, they're, they're, they're good, but I, I, I think I had them up too much. I, I don't think they're going to be that good. Yeah, I, I agree. I like the Colts though. I mean, I do like the Colts. I think the Chargers, if they do sneak in, it's going to take a lot of Justin Herbert to get them into the playoffs. Uh, their defense is still okay. It's so good. I think they can – That's a, I think that's a key for me is the defensive-wise. The Colts, I think, have a little bit, tad bit better defense than the Chargers do. That's what it ultimately will get them into the playoffs, I believe, between these two teams, if both of them are actually there at the end to make the playoffs. Uh, definitely the Colts. Um, other than that, man, you know, when we get back here on 4th and 40, it's time to pick them. We go – Game by game, we're going to give you all of our picks. We'll be right back. If you'd like to be a sponsor of Sweep the League, 4th and 40, and the Fantasy Countdown, contact me, Rudy Campos Jr. My email is rcomposjr at icloud.com. And it's pick em time here on 4th and 40. Rudy Campos Jr., Coach Geo, the man behind the glass, Chris Galler. Obviously, you know, we had a Thursday night game, Dolphins, Jaguars, Ryan Fitzmagic, the beard took on Gardner Minshew, the stash, the beard ended up winning ultimately 31 to 13. Uh, James Robinson had a hell of a game, a uh, really good game, 40 something yards yeah, on the ground, uh, two touchdowns, 83 yards uh, receiving, six receptions. Miles Gaskin was a bright spot for the Miami Dolphins. I was able to pick him up on a couple of fantasy teams this past week. Didn't play him, though, but glad I have him. So we're going week to week here on the last segment. I'm sorry, week to week. Game to game here on week three. On the last segment here on 4th and 40, Bears and Falcons. Gio, who do you have in this game? Please tell me you have the Bears. I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons. You have cursed my team again, sir. You have cursed my team <laughs> I'm going again. With the Falcons. <laughs> I don't know what the line is, but I, I, I feel like line is Atlanta not minus three. That's I have Atlanta by it is listen, I'm going with two touchdowns. I just think their offense is just it's, it's just better. Way better than the Bears. The yeah. Falcons should win this game. Two touchdowns. Give me the 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the Falcons again, which I don't know why I'm doing. Give me give me the Falcons unless they're up two touchdowns with one minute to go. Then give me the Bears at that. So <laughs> both of us taking the Falcons. Let's head over to Lincoln Financial, Lincoln Financial Field. Bengals at the Eagles. This is a battle of 0-2 teams. Who do you got in this in this barn burner right here? I got the Bengals, Rudy. I'm going with the upset. Joe Burrow, Burrow yeah. definitely. You know, I really like the Eagles at home, but you're right, man. I'm going to go with the Bengals as well. I think we finally get a good dose of Joe Mixon this week. Uh, he's only had 35 carries. He's only 115 yards on a fantasy standard. You're like, what the hell? Why was he a first Yeah, he hasn't done there? anything. Yeah, but so. for his, you know, the offensive line's been really bad, really bad, Rudy. Every time oh, he gets yeah. the ball, they're literally in the backfield. So, can't put it all on him. Yeah, I know, for sure. This is the week I think he actually gets going. Give me the Bengals over the Eagles. Uh, the spread on that is Philadelphia minus five. Oh, no, take the Bengals plus five on that one. The Cowboys at the Seahawks. We're heading over to CenturyLink Field. This is a game where I'm kind of torn in between. I do like Seattle at home. I just don't know why, but give me the Cowboys on this one. Yeah, well, I mean, we know that's your favorite team besides the Yeah, Bobby, my so. second favorite team by marriage. Give me the Cowboys. It's Seattle minus five. Take the Cowboys. I like the points on that. Give me Seattle. Um, Russell Wilson. Both defenses are, are pretty leaky, if you ask me, but I think Russell Wilson is going to be able to make more plays. Mm -hmm. Give me Seattle. I go based off of that. I just go based off Ezekiel Elliott. That's why I'm thinking that that came right there as the Cowboys. Rams, Bills, heading over to Bills Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. This is a game we talked about earlier. I know Gio probably loves the Rams. He's the Ram ambassador. But I'm going to ride the wave, the Josh Allen wave, the Stephon Diggs wave. Give me the Bills at home to beat the Rams. It's not necessarily an upset because this is a battle of the 2-0 and teams. Give me the Bills at home. Well, I mean, you'll be surprised what I'm going to pick. I'm I'm picking the Rams here. Um, <laughs> I think the Rams are going to be able to run the football against the Bills. I think the Bills, I think two of their linebackers might be out this week. I think the Rams are going to be running the football. They know how good this offense is. Jalen Ramsey is going to be matched up against Diggs. And Aaron Donald, uh, he had a, a quiet week last week, and I expect him to come out punching. I like the Rams here to get the W on the road. First, Cernergy Stadium, Cleveland, Ohio, Washington, rah, nope, football team. Cleveland Browns, hey, the best team on paper. <laughs> I'm going to say something that I didn't think I would ever say in my lifetime. Washington over Cleveland. Give me the football team over Cleveland no. this week. I think Baker was too hyped. He was like, oh, we're, you know, this and that. They made a statement against a Cincinnati Bengals team. I want Washington to come out and punch Baker right in the mouth. Give me the football team. Antonio Gibson will secretly have a good day tomorrow, today. <laughs> Rudy, give me the Browns. They're just a better football. They're just clearly the better football team. They're going to get the win. You said the same so, thing when the football team played against the Eagles in week one. So. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. I picked the upset. I, well, you wait, did pick the upset. Actually, I picked the upset week one. So. I'm going to take the football team. Now, on my sports dime picks, I might end up taking Cleveland on that one. Uh, <laughs> but give me football team on this. U.S. Bank Stadium, Tennessee Titans going in to face against a should have been Super Bowl contending team, Minnesota Vikings. I man, I love the Titans. I love the Titans. Love them, love them, love them. I think Minnesota gets their first win this week. I think they bounce back. Give me the Vikings at home against the Titans. Uh, Rudy, I'm going to go with the Titans here. I think they're going to run the football down the Vikings. Throw empty bars out for the year for the Vikings. Just, mm -hmm. just give me Tennessee. Tannehill very efficient. John o. Smith, Corey Davis. He's been coming to his own this season so far. Give me Tennessee. I think they're going to run the hell out of that ball. And they're going to beat up, beat up the Vikings <laughs> on Sunday. 
Gillette Stadium, Foxborough, Raiders, 2-0, the Raiders, going up against Cam Newton, Bill Belichick, and the Patriots. Cam has been looking really good, barring a bonehead play, in my opinion, and Gio's opinion as well. Uh, should have audibled at the line. They should be 2-0. They should be a matchup of 2-0 teams. I love Cam Newton at home. He's been doing good. I love the Patriots at home. I'm going to actually go with the Raiders on this one. I've really liked what I've seen from the Raiders. John Gruden has this team playing at a higher level, at a different level at that. I think we're going to see a 3-0 Raiders team coming out of week three. Who do you got? Uh, Rudy, I got the I got the Patriots here. I think Cam Newton's going to get out with his legs. Unlike Drew Brees, who's a statue in the pocket, <laughs> Cam can actually move around. Going to make plays with his legs. Going to extend plays. I think the Patriots are going to play ball control offense. Keep Darren Waller out. Uh, I like the Patriots here, but this is going to be a tough game. I think the Raiders still have a great chance of winning this football game. Yeah. Niners at the Giants in MetLife Stadium. Niners having so many injuries. I don't think that affects them too much here. I still like San Francisco in this game against the Giants. Daniel Jones. 520 yards, only two touchdowns on the season. I know he's my boy, but until he gets an offensive line, it's going to be terrible for him. Give me the 49ers in this one. I'm going with the Giants here. This football team, yes, I'm going with the New York football Giants. I expect Darius Slayton. Sterling Shepard's going to be out. He's on IR for a few weeks. Darius Slayton's going to have a big game. I think the Giants come out, and they're going to get one. Not for the Gipper, but for Saquon. Wow. Okay, so you're taking the Giants. This next game is in Heinz yep. Field, Pittsburgh. Plus, Houston. the Jets players have been getting hurt on, on that, that field, field last week of the Jets. So <laughs> maybe somebody oh, else might get God. hurt. I'm going with the Giants here. Jeez. Texans at the Steelers. I love Deshaun Watson, but the Steelers are the Steelers. Give me the Steelers all day. Enough said. I don't really have to get into this too much. Dude, what, who made the schedule for the Texans? My God. They can't catch a break. Uh, I'm going with Pittsburgh here. That defense, I saw them against the Giants a few weeks ago. They just knocked them out. <laughs> um, that defense is coming, though. Denver just put up some points. But give me Pittsburgh. They're going to run the ball. They, they're a better team right now. For sure. And, and I think yeah. they should fire uh, their head coach, by the way, the uh, Texans. I think it's time. That's been another fire Dan. Hashtag fire Dan Quinn. <laughs> hashtag fire Bill O'Brien. All right, we're going to go through these the next couple of games pretty quick here. Jets and Colts. Enough said, Colts. I have no reason to think otherwise. I'm going with the New York football Colts. Yeah, definitely you should. Panthers (laughs) at the Chargers, SoFi Stadium. Uh, No CMC. He's out. I'm going to take the Chargers in this one. They're at home. Panthers, I don't think, have enough to even compete with the Chargers in this one. If the Panthers have D'Angelo Williams, maybe. But uh, I'm going with the Chargers here. Hell, even Jonathan Stewart would have been fine. And power field at mile high. Broncos and Buccaneers. The Broncos 0-2. Jeff Driscoll getting the uh, start for an injured Drew Locke. It's Tampa Bay. It's Tom Brady. Gronk is just here to block, baby. Give me the Buccaneers. (laughs) Well, that's the way he's been playing. Rudy, I'm going to go with the upset here. I think the Denver Broncos win. In an ugly game, I think Tom Brady and those boys are going to struggle a little bit at Mount High Stadium. Secretly, I could see Noah Fant having a very big game here. But, again, I'm going to take the Buccaneers. Lions at the Cardinals State Farm Stadium. We've hyped this guy up a whole lot in the offseason. Matthew Stafford, 541 yards passing, three touchdowns. I love the Cardinals in this game, but I'm going to take the Lions here. I think they get their first win this week. Kenny Galladay coming back, that makes a huge difference for Stafford. Give me the Lions. I'm going to go with the Arizona Cardinals, though. I I could see a situation where the Lions do win the football game. But give me the Cardinals. I think Taylor Murray's been playing phenomenal. Um, And Hopkins has just been a reception machine (laughs) these past few weeks. I think Cardinals get it done. I think they go 3-0. All right, got a minute left. Packers at Saints. Hey, no Michael Thomas. Aaron Rodgers has been balling this uh, this season already. I think it continues. Packers come out with the victory. They go to 3-0. and Drew Brees, like you said, Drew Brees is Drew statue right now. Well, I've been dying to put up my rest in peace Packers memes that I have. But 
the Packers are going to be winning this football game. I just think they're a better team. Now, Devontae Adams might be out. Not sure just yet. Uh, yeah. Let's see if on Drew Brees. I know he has a water noodle for an arm, but he could. There could be some things had here, but give me the Packers. I think it could be a shootout, just like this game coming up. Monday night, the final game of week three. Chiefs heading into MNT Bank Stadium to face the Baltimore Ravens. Both teams are 2-0. and Out of both teams, Baltimore, to me, has looked the best. Give me the MVP of the Super Bowl and his Chiefs to beat Baltimore this Wait year. a minute. You just, you just told me how you don't trust the Chiefs. I don't trust them, but I think what it is is one of those cases that we've seen in other sports where you have a bad game, you didn't play well, you know you've okay. got to do better. It's Monday night. This right, is a Rudy. game. I'm going with. <laughs> I'm going the with Patrick American Mahomes home. to win this game. Uh, this is <laughs> this is probably one of the games that I – I could see Ravens really winning this game. Yeah. I got the Chiefs. The Ravens are going to have to play ball control. Their defense, though, Rudy, is really good. I saw them play against – I mean, it's it was the Texans. But I saw that game a little bit. The, Ch- the Ravens defense is for real. It yeah. could be Kansas City. Mm-hmm. But if the Chiefs, if they can't run the football and make this a one-dimension game, I think the Ravens could have a good shot here. Oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I could see either team winning – I'm going with Kansas City just because I feel like they need that game to come out and show everybody, look, we're we are the same team. In fact, we're probably better than what we were last year. This is a statement game. That's the reason why I'm taking Kansas City in this. I can definitely see Baltimore winning this game as well. And you know what? That's week three in the books, man. We'll be back for week four, obviously, next week. A lot of good games coming up here. A lot of great games. Hope you guys enjoy the games today. And you know what? We're hoping Chris. Hey, go is Georgia be Bulldogs. Us. Go Georgia, Georgia Bulldogs. Bulldogs are playing a sorry ass <laughs> Razorbacks, and we better not lose to this team. That's I sure this. as hell hope not, man. I sure as hell hope not. But yeah, we hope. <laughs> well, to you know get our Chris quarterback, up. Rudy, our, our starting quarterback, he decided not to play this year because of uh, COVID nineteen. So, which we've seen a lot, and yeah. I I totally get that. I totally understand why you know players don't want to play, but. You know, it is what it is. It's, you know, it's part of the society. It's part of our culture right now, our country right now with, you know, going on with COVID-19. So if you want to sit out, you can sit out. That's no problem. You know, we want everybody to be safe as always. But again, you know, week three is in the books. Week four, we'll be back for that as well. Hopefully we'll have Chris Gallard back with us on the next show. But of course, it's fourth and 40. We thank you all for joining us. Remember, if you're on fourth and 40, always go for it. Never punt the ball. That's the Madden rule. We'll see you all next week.